Hi there everyone and welcome to a flip or <laughs> me going through the completed pages of what I've done between August, September and October. You're thinking why haven't I done this sooner? I didn't have enough in previous months to be able to sort of, sort of compile a big good video for you so now I have so we're going to do a quarterly one. I'm going to push this big stack aside and I'm going to go through them individually. So my latest piece, my latest completed page is from Hannah Lynn's Victorian Darlings. Uh, this was done with mostly ink tents. Now, you're always going to be a little bit more washed out on the cameras to what they actually are, which is, you know, not true to how the lighting and the colours look. But we're going to try and do make do with what we've got. So this was done mostly with Derwent ink tents. There is a, a sharpie black marker for the blackboard and I also put some prisms on the face and Derwent drawing pencils um, for the you see here it's like a wheat colour and the wheat is really good for doing ivory however the rest was done with Derwent ink tents and they were a ton of fun they do make the paper buckle ever so slightly because it is a wet medium but for the most part this card which is 160 GSM card it's a matte finish it takes markers it takes water medium it takes everything really well so i'd really highly recommend this card for printing your pdfs on so i did get the pdf in the victorian darlings for hannah lynn which i'm quite happy about because i can print off various copies so i'm really happy with how that and that was only like two hours Derwent ink tents are super fast, super fun, and I really, really, really recommend that you go ahead and try to just have a go with the ink tents because they are a ton of fun to do. Then I've done three out of three, and they are <laughs> they are in loose leaves now because my serene got water damaged, but we won't go into that. So this one is. Um, this one is called Ayla, Ayla, and this was done with Polychromos, I believe, I think Polys, Prismas, I just used a bunch of pencils, and then I did this script stencil in the background, and I had a lot of fun doing this, and I kind of just tried to shade according to the way that the face was going, put a little bit more like purpley pink in her to her skin tone to make her a little bit more blending in with these parts at the top and I had a real good time with her. I then did this one on streams with everybody and this one is also from Serene. It's super shiny when you do this with it and this was done with whole binds and then we used the Fine Tech Colorio paints for the shiny parts. So we did a more orange bronze tone and then a really shiny super gold tone. And this also had some Pentel hybrids into the parts there. So if you if I do that, you can see how shiny that is. And this also was a ton of fun. This one is called Tulip because of the tulips that she's got at the bottom. So this was also fun to do. This one was an experiment. And this was also done um, with distress inks in the background and a stencil. And it was to kind of match the face that I'd had going on. Because I had this idea of sort of making her as she's half queen and half like jungle. So she got a junglish theme, like a more animal, animalish type thing. So <clears throat> I did this with um, various pencils. I also did markers. So if I turn this at the back, you will see that they do bleed through. So you can see the variation in colours that I've used to blend the markers. And these were the Spectrum Noir markers. So I've used a marker base and I've also, on some parts, I haven't gone in with pencil. But I have gone in with pencil in some parts too. So it's a mixed media piece and I really do mean that in the sense of markers, pencils, um, distressing, stencil, everything. <laughs> Gel pen has gone on to certain bits like these gold parts here. So you can see how shiny this part is and the top. So there really is a mixed media element about this picture. Then I've done one from the 
amazing Christine Karen Grayscale Fairies. This one is Cherry Fairy Grayscale Colouring Page by Christine Karen. And this was done with various pencils, I think mostly luminance, some Posca detailing, and also I have made the cherries a little bit shiny with some Winker Stella. But this was really fun to do. <clears throat> I love Christine Karen's work. She is absolutely amazing in her grayscale line art. You can go over to her Etsy store and her Etsy store has all of the loose leaf that you can print out yourself, PDF forms of her fairy. Then another strong favourite of mine is Mariola Boudac. And Mariola Boudac is fairly new onto the colouring scene. She has an Etsy store and she has these really whimsical fairies. And then on the other side, she's got these really cute drawings of little gals and just a very childish element. But she focuses a lot on the hair because she loves to draw hair and she's made that quite public. So I did this one and this is from Mariola Budek, her Etsy store. So this was done in, I think, mostly luminance, and then we've just done a few Posca highlights. So that was also fun. Then this was a very quick, when I couldn't sleep, piece. And this was by Yana Fairy Art. Again, another Etsy store that I seem to visit quite a lot. This has got some paint on the background and also just some fog to make it a little bit more atmospheric for Halloween. But this was done super quick. I used a lot of Poscas in her hair to kind of just make the strands come out and stand out a little bit more. But this was super fun to do as well. This is a new to me artist that I've recently discovered and I really enjoy her line art. So if you haven't already seen Mariola and you haven't already seen Christine and a new one to you, Yana, Yana Fairy Art, I recommend those three Etsy stores if you're new to Etsy and you don't know where to start. So she's a new to me artist and I'll definitely be purchasing more of her work. And then I did a very quick watercolour one out of Misfits number no. three by White Stag. And this was mostly watercolour. So I watercoloured the background, the stones and the grass. And then we've got I watercolored everything and then I put some pencil and very small shading into this but for the most of it the watercolors shaded and I didn't need to add additional shading in so this was more of a I've done quite a lot of experimental things I just wanted to get the hang of watercolors ink tents and you'll see later super tips so I've kind of just been experimenting. They're nothing special, but it was more just to see what I could do with the different mediums that I've got in my collection. So this is one is called One Way, and that's from number three by White Stag of the Misfits books. Then, of course, we've got to have throw a Disney picture or two into a month. This is from the French book, and it's from the sort of heroine princess, you know, the ones that we've got in our films <clears throat> and this one I did and it's going to wash out so I'm going to have to adjust a second this one is uh, Rapunzel Tangled there we go and this one was a super quick one again the background was all pre-did in terms of the purple the lilac and I just added in the shading on the little tiny floating things that are in her background and then I coloured her so she was done just with luminance and again it was just a nice simple quick carefree mindless colouring that I really did enjoy. And then I forgot I'd done this. I did this out of the Courage Wild book and this is by Emmanuel Collin so I'll show you the front. This was number two and this was so simple quick and easy and I didn't really want a background to it so I've left the background and the, the kind of thinking behind this one is that I just keep it simple so if I bring her a bit closer I just wanted her to have pink hair she wanted to be just very 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 simple and just something that I had fun with so I kept this simple and to 
the nature of the flowers like they're usually yellow when I've seen them on you know outside these are usually blues and sort of like turquoise that go into the feathers and then her hair I wanted to sort of contrast against the flowers so I kept that I might revisit this one for a background at a later time then we did one from Momo Girls, Girls with Poem, and we did this on streams. And this was done with various pencils. Now, unfortunately, my copy kind of come apart just on this page, but that's not to worry. It's nothing that I can't, you know, sort out later. So we used various mediums on this, and I've missed this tiny little flower in the background, but that's not to worry. So I have used, I think luminance, we used the colour softs and prismas, you know, we used quite a lot of mediums in this one and we had fun on the streams with her over a course of I think three to four streams. So if you head on over to the channel and you would like to do her, you can find her on the live streams. Just a pre-warning, I am a live streaming channel and there is a live chat. So if you follow along on these live streams, you might want to open the chat so you can follow along. Otherwise, what I'm saying out loud might not make much sense unless you follow the chat. Then we headed over to the Halloween special by Colouring Heaven. And I was particularly drawn in to the new to, well, I think it's new to many people, artist Ennis Guerrero. Now, I've later found out that she has got a Patreon page, and she's also got now a new Facebook colouring group. So if you head on over to Facebook, there is a new colouring group for Ennis Guerrero. You can also join the Colouring Heaven, Friends of Colouring Heaven Facebook group, and you will find more details on that too. So this one was done with just a mixture of pencils. I tried to add some elements of veins on her face like red veins coming down like she's a bit like Carrie the voodoo doll I tried to make moldy and I just kind of kept to a palette with that and then I moved on and we did this over a couple of live streams and we did season of the witch and this half experimental piece with the background to make it a bit more atmospheric and then we kind of just kept to a limited palette on the actual image itself and this one was called season of the witch and there's two live streams on this so again if you look back on the channel and you want to follow along you are more than welcome to I highly recommend that you open the chat so that you can follow the chat with it and that will enable you to kind of follow what was said on the day so that you can make sense of what I'm saying out loud then another one that we did on the channel <clears throat> was from a gifted book by Melody, which was the Forest Girls Colouring Book. And this is the premium hardback edition. And we did this in super colours, Quran Dash super colours. And I tried to kind of mirror as much as possible, change a few things, the image that's already pre-existing on the left hand side. And then you get the liner on the right hand side. So I tried to mirror as much as possible the colours and the palette that we had going on. The only few things I changed was the colour of the dress. I kept to a blue, but a lighter blue. And the colour of the scarf, I did it to match the dog rather than the background. But we did this with Quran Dash Super Colours as a big sort of experiment, really, because we've not used them on a whole page before on the channel. So again, if you want to follow this and you've got the super colours and you've got this new hardback edition of Forest Girls, you can go back a couple of live streams and you will find both of them that we do and complete this in two streams. Then another colouring heaven that I absolutely love is the Hannah Lynn. I've got all of her books and I've got all of these pictures, but I really fancy just digging in there with some markers. So I did a marker base on her dress and I, I, the rest of it was watercolours. So I watercoloured the um, background, I think the grass, and I just kind of had a bit of an experiment again and just trying to do more mixed media pieces and see what I can make of them. I have put some stickles on the purple elements in her dress 
And other than that, I've kind of stuck to a limited forest palette and then I wanted her dress to stand out. So there is some shading in purple and that's a little tip for me is if you've got a dark red, if you shade in purple, it will really contrast and shade against the red. So I've found that as I've gone along in my colouring journey. And then the wolves were also in watercolour that I've done some grey to go in with the white. And then the rest was done in a watercolour palette from the Jane Davenport sets. Then a couple of fun ones, and these are mindless, but especially for me as a pain sufferer. On days where I do not like to do too much and I don't want to think, and I want to put a little bit of a marker base down and then shade with pencils, where I don't have to think too much, the Miss Wa Shades of Kawai, Volume 3, I've got all of them. This one in particular is a favourite of mine. So I did two pages in here. This one was to just stick to a very repetitive colour palette as well as the pattern. So I wanted just a very wallpaperish theme, but fun. And this is just a really fun one to do. So I based with Crayola Super Tips. I went in with some luminance pencils and I went crazy with Poscas and some pastel gel pens on the sprinkles. And honestly, this was one of the most fun pictures in four years that I have done in terms of mindless. I also did another fun one, which was sausages and tins of beans. And again, base of Crayola Super Tips. And then I went in with some Poscas and some Luminance. And this was just another fun, mindless, great pain day picture. So this is the volume three. I have got one and two as well, but I'm more drawn to volume three because it's got more of a repeating pattern of like food, and just really fun pictures to kind of go with. You know, just, it's mindless. Mm -hmm. You've got hamburgers, you know, they're just the types of pictures that you don't really need to think too much and you can just have a ton of fun with. And I think the colouring book artist has some fun with her own work too. Then the next one that we did on streams for the Pan Pastels was the Jasmine Beckett Griffith Halloween colouring book. We did this for our cosy colouring night. And this was done over the course of two streams. So this was done with pan pastels and some small amount of shading with Prismacolors. And we did this over two streams, I believe. So again, if you want to head back on, go through the channel, you will see how to do this with the pan pastels if you've got the full set. If you don't have the full set, you can purchase them in single pots. I think we only used think about 10 to 12 at most so you don't have to purchase the full set you can purchase just a few singles and see how you like them they are a completely different medium altogether and you can kind of get a feel for them and see what you think of whether you like them whether there's something for you and they do take some practice so there are great tutorials out there there are some great YouTube channels that will show you how to do the basics of pan pastels. So I highly recommend that you go and check those out. Then the last three. So we've got one in the Camilla D. Erico Pop Manga Coloring Book. This is the first one, not the Mermaids. And again, we did this over a couple of streams. This was one of those that didn't turn out how I wanted it to, but in the end, it was all okay. We followed a tutorial in one of the colouring special effects by Helen Elliston to do the ice cream, which I thought came out pretty good. So the whole point in this was to follow the ice cream tutorials and see what we could do. So the background was a total disaster and we ended up painting over, but that's okay. You learn from your mistakes. And then we used the stencil as well. So this was also on the channel, so if you go on back, you can find this too. Then I've got a total quick experimental hour piece. Oh, focus, focus, focus. For some reason, there we go. So I am new to Carla Magana, and I always find her YouTube channel a lot of fun. And also, it's one of those channels that, she just has a great old time with Crayola Super Tips. So I thought, okay, I want to try this. 
So this is nothing for the eye, guys. This was totally just to see what I could do on this eagle with the Corolla Super Tips and water. And that was my whole point in this. It was what can I do with Corolla Super Tips when I activate them with water? How messy can I make it? And this was the result. So this was purely just an experiment. This is nothing that, you know, I'm for a first time, I'm not proud of it, but it's one of those that I just wanted to have a go with. So this was just Corolla Super Tips and the most small, and I mean minimal amount of pencil. So this was just to see what we can do if we mix water put the Corolla super tips down and then muddle it on a page so that was by Carla Magana I will be trying to do more from her in the coming months so this one is her newest release We Wickeds I really want to do one of her ladies so that's where I'll be heading next when I do one of Carla's in the future and the final one that I have completed for the three month wrap up was one where I tried to do black hair for the first time. And this was Vanellope Von Sweets by the Hatchet Heroes Portraits book. And I did a very quick demo on how I did the black hair. Black hair is very hard to achieve and it's one of those that needs a lot of practice. So I kind of stuck with a minimal palette that we did um, in, you know, that she's got into the films. And I stuck true to the kind of movie colours that she's got. So she's got this little green jumper. She's got red in her hair. And then the candy canes and stuff are just stuck to what we, you know, know from the films. But I did this with grey and black luminance pencils and had a little bit of a shine. So it's something now that I feel that I can do more of because I used to avoid black hair like the plague because it's really hard to do. But I did do a short demonstration on the channel and it's just before I think we got stuck into one of the bell pictures that we were doing, which I still need to finish. So this is, takes a bit of getting used to, but this isn't as hard as what I thought it would be. So we definitely will be doing more on black hair in the coming streams that we've got going on. So that is my completed pages. There is quite a lot. I think it was 21. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already, thumbs up. And also, if you want to catch a live stream, subscribe and hit the bell. If you hit the bell, you'll get a notification when I go live, as I am a live streaming channel. And I mostly do colour alongs and tips and helpful hints on when we do the live streams. I live stream on a Tuesday and a Saturday at 4 p.m. UK time and the occasional Thursdays. Thank you for watching, everyone. You take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.